presents High School Basketball. Tonight's game is brought to you by Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Doan Ford, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Valentine Insurance, Village Hardware and Rental, Smithburger Realty, Barnesville Do It Fast, Rumor Loudon, and Hendershot Auto Detailing. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Buckeye Trail High School, where we start the Division III Boys State Basketball Tournament at district tournament level tonight as they prepare for the state and try to qualify. And tonight we have Barnesville at Buckeye Trail. Barnesville with a record of 13 and nine this season, and Buckeye Trail 15 and seven. I'm Mark Brown with Jeff Stevens, and Jeff, uh, Barnesville, First, uh, you're doing a very good job this year. Uh, I think surpassed what most people thought they could do this year uh, after the way things have gone the last couple of years. 13 wins, uh, a nice uh, year for them. Yeah, nice you know, job the first year head coach Shane Stevens and his Buckeye Trail Warrior team you know, comes in at 15 and 7. This Warrior team started out really hot at the beginning of the year, uh, 12 and 1 record, and then the, had some issues come up there during the course of the last part of the season with some injuries and struggled a little bit, but they came off of a win last Friday night. And one thing I might think about here tonight, Barnesville's not played in 12 days. And since Barnesville last played, Buckeye Trail's played four times. Yeah. So we'll you know we'll see what kind of a factor that may make, if any. Uh, Buckeye Trail you know, will come out tonight with about nine different players, uh, we assume, and Barnesville usually plays about six. So we'll see how things work out. But you know, what looks like it should be a really good basketball game. I would think so. And for those of we are here on WBNB 93.5 FM. Also, if you want to let anybody know, um, we are also on television tonight. We are on YouTube TV at YRP TV if you get on YouTube. And also, you can connect to either one of those on yourradioplace.com if you have somebody out of the area. Let them know about that. You can watch it any place in the world as long as you've got internet. So uh, sit back and enjoy the game tonight as Barnesville and Buckeye Trail play each other. And uh, a couple of things here. Uh, like you said, Barnesville's played almost two weeks ago. A big story in that game was uh, senior Asa Geilinger. He scored his thousandth point. And something I was surprised talking to Brad Wilson, who's kept him and his father have kept the stats for close to 100 years of Barnesville. Only the sixth player in Barnesville history to score a thousand points. That's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, I would have guessed you know you know a couple of more than that. If you would ask me, I would have guessed maybe you know nine, ten players past that. But that makes you know, Asa Geilinger the number six on the all-time list, you know, right at one thousand points. And not sure how much he would need to move into fifth, but um, you know it's still a good accomplishment. But yeah, fewer than what I thought of, of Shamrock players over the years. And a little bit later, maybe we'll give a trivia question here. Uh, some of you can think we've got this list. Who were the other five 1,000-plus point scorers in Barnesville history? We can talk about that maybe at halftime or later on if you want to try to think about that. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to mention also you know, the winner of this game tonight will play again on Friday night. That's March 1st against the winner of the Harrison Central versus Belair game which one would guess would probably be Harrison Central, but you, you never know. If, if the winner of, the, of that game is Harrison Central, the, the winner of this game would travel to Caddis and play at Harrison Central on Friday night. If Belair should win there tonight, then the winner of this game would host the, the, on Friday night. But you know, that would be this Friday night, Harrison Central or Belair for the winner of this game. And these two teams met Barnesville and Buckeye Trail back on December 27th here at Buckeye Trail. The Warriors came out on top 61-56 to in that game. Buckeye Trail led 47-33 at the end of three quarters, but uh, Barnesville made a run, cut it to three, and ended up losing by five. Uh, Buckeye Trail got a big game that night out of Charlie Perry, who had 20 points and 14 rebounds, and also um, Travis Dodd had 10 points. Barnesville had good balance that night. They had uh, 14 points from Duker Costello, 13 from Braden Willis, and 10 apiece from Isa Geilinger and Taysen Starr. So these teams are somewhat familiar, and both head coaches tonight, graduates of Buckeye Trail High School. Yes, Shane Stevens, I believe 2007 graduate, but don't quote me on that. And um, 2005, he told me. Five, okay, all right then. 
So, and also then Greg Strasser, did he tell you what year he got? Uh, Greg he was Strasser later. was about 2009, 2010 area on that. So they did not play at the same time here, but both did graduate and play ball here at Buckeye Trail. And, of course, uh, Shane Stevens has been uh, an assistant here at Barnesville for several years and uh, just this year taking over the, the head coaching job uh, here at the Warriors. You know, uh, let's hit real quick here, maybe before we go to a commercial break here, the, um, the starting lineups t tonight. Uh, let's look at Buckeye Trail first. You know, they will start um, a senior, Gavin Rome, a 5'10", and as I said, a senior, and one guard also, Cohen Egan, who's a 5'9", senior. A uh, big man in the middle is Charlie Perry, 6'4", senior. Uh, Travis Dodd is a 5'11", junior. And Donovan Geiger, who is a 6'2", senior. So once again tonight, Barnes will give away a little bit of height, you know, to the opponent. But once again, for Buckeye Trail, Gavin Rome, Cohen Egan, Charlie Perry, Travis Dodd, and Donovan Geiger. All right, the Barnesville starters will be the same as they have been oh, about the last uh, second half of the season. All seniors except for Casey Carpenter. He is a junior. He's 5'11". Tayson Starr is 5'10", of course, a senior. Another senior, Luke Detling at 5'10". Duker Costello at 5'10", a senior, and Asa Geilinger at 6'3". Geilinger, the only player uh, in the starters and uh, that is over uh, six foot tall. So again, Casey Carpenter, Tayson Starr, Luke Detling, Duker Costello, and Asa Geilinger. And before we cut out for a commercial break here, I want to mention our sponsors tonight. We have some new people on board tonight. Thank you, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WB Green Insurance, Valentine Insurance, Smithburger Realty, Barnesville Do It Best, Rumor Loudon, Hendershot Detailing, Village Hardware and Rental, West 40 Auto Sales, and Doan Ford. Thank you to our sponsors. All right. Looking for top-notch hardware? Check out the spring specials going on now through the end of June at Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. The best part? They're open seven days a week for your convenience. Good luck, seniors, from Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. They've got everything you need. Go Rocks from Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. Doan Ford is proud to introduce the ultimate adventure companion, the Bronco four-door advanced 4x4 Badlands. With a powerful 2.3-liter EcoBoost engine and seven-speed manual transmission, conquer any terrain with confidence, featuring a soft top, four-inch lift, and massive 35-inch tires. Adventure knows no bounds. Stay connected and in control with an 8-inch digital screen while enjoying added convenience with power-heated mirrors and auto high-beam headlamps, plus equipped with a Smitty-built winch. Be prepared for any challenge. Don't miss out on this incredible deal. DoanFord.com. Looking to make your vehicle shine like new? Hendershot Detailing in Barnesville is your answer. With over 20 years of experience, their team knows cars, trucks, and SUVs inside and out. They offer a range of packages to fit your needs. Check them out on Facebook and give them a call or text at 579-1374 to schedule your appointment today. Hendershot Detailing, where every detail counts. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it's for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company from Iowa to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today, 740-305-5121, and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Hi, this is Melissa Smithberger. And I'm Crystal Vogler with Smithberger Realty. Are you looking to sell or buy real estate? Smithberger Realty is a part of our nation's largest traditional and auction real estate company. We also represent the largest network for recreational land through Realtree hunting properties. We can provide you with national marketing with local expertise. Come visit our offices in Clarington or Barnesville. Smithberger Realty, ready to work for you. Smithberger Realty is an affiliate of United Country Real Estate. Do you really think that an insurance company who promises quotes in a few minutes has your best interest in mind? Do they really know you and what coverages you need? Hi, this is John Valentine with Valentine Insurance. We take time to learn about you and your insurance needs so you can feel comfortable that you're receiving the right coverages at the best possible prices. 
find us on Facebook, stop by our office, or give us a call at 994-1776. Valentine Insurance, a partner you can depend on. You're listening to High School Basketball on 93 BNV, WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield. We're back here at Bar uh, Buckeye Trail High School as we get ready to start the OHSA tournament, first round, Division Three sectional tournament between Buckeye Trail and the visitors, Barnesville Shamrocks. Again, if you're just joining us, Barnesville this year, 13 and nine, and Buckeye Trail, 15 and seven. And again, we'll go through the starters here real quickly as they are being announced. For Barnesville, Casey Carpenter, Tayson Starr, Luke Detling, Duker Costello, and Asa Geilander. And the Warriors of Coach Greg Strasser will come with Gavin Rome, Cohen Egan, Charlie Perry, Travis Dodd, and Donovan Geiger. And we expect to see the Warriors come with probably at least four different subs off the bench here early in the game as they will rotate up to nine people. Um, rotation was down a little bit here the last few weeks because they had some injuries, but everybody is now back and, and able to play tonight. And the Shamrocks, as we said in, earlier in the pregame, has basically been a, a six-man rotation here the last uh, several games. But, you know, sometimes, you know, that kind of changes, you know, at tournament time. You, you look at guys, you know, maybe played some JV, and now they're eligible, you know, to play the whole game. So we'll, we'll see. And, of course, foul trouble and et cetera dictates that. Right. And also a reminder that the winner of this game will play Friday night against the winner of Bel Air and Harrison Central. Some other games in the area tonight, uh, Monroe Central. They are hosting in the Division Four. They are hosting Shenandoah, and Caldwell in Division Four is at Shady Side. And I know we got some other schools around here. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, we're uh, Meadowbrook. Yeah, unless unless teams were, were able to get a bye tonight, you know, everybody in the Eastern District, you know, plays tonight, and winners come back and play either. Uh, I think Division Three and Division Four will be Friday night, but Division Two is basically a, a Saturday night deal there so we'll see how this one plays out here tonight as they've introduced the the shamrocks and they'll introduce the buckeye trail warriors here the officials that we have with us tonight the uh the head referee who will toss the ball up here in a couple of moments is adrian williams he's joined tonight by scott anders and chris schubert shamrocks out on the floor ready to go as you see the Buckeye Trail lineup is introduced to coming out. And again, as Mark mentioned during pregame, there we are also live streaming here tonight. You can pick this game up through Facebook and YouTube on YRP TV. That stands for your radio place. YRP TV on YouTube and Facebook and also through yourradioplace.com. So a lot of options there tonight to listen and watch the game tonight and thank all of our sponsors who you will see you know through the night coming across your screen if you're watching us and a big thank you to all those people and we'll mention them during the night there for making that possible and we're about ready to go mark mr adrian williams out ready to toss the ball up asa geilinger to jump against charlie perry and we're ready to go all right so the Division three Eastern sectional starts. It looks like Geilinger hit that ball on the way yeah. up, but the, but the Warriors do control, and Shamrocks are gonna be in a zone. On the side, this is Geiger dribbles across there to Rome. In the corner, that is Egan, and the ball's knocked away on the side, and it will go out of bounds. Last touch there by Duker Costello. And the ball is inbounded there, and this is Gavin Rome. He's on the point. Gets the ball in the high post there. That's Travis Dodd back out top. Warriors showing some patience against this. A little back cut there, tried to get it to Perry, and the ball off his hands. Goes out of bounds. First possession of the game is a turnover for the Warriors, and it will be Barnesville basketball. And we'll see some full court pressure to start this game. As Brockeye Trail brings up, this will be Luke Detling. Yeah, it's all man pressure. He's guarded there closely by Cohen Egan. And that was Asa Geilinger. 
the 1,000 point score, and he hits a three pointer to start the game for the Shamrocks. Asa picks up right where he left off a couple of weeks ago when he hit that 1,000 point mark. And the Warriors now, Egan dribbles across. This is Geiger. And getting inside there, this is Charlie Perry. His little jump hook off, no good. Rebound to Casey Carpenter of the Shamrocks. This will be Detling. He'll pull back and clear out and get it up to Casey Carpenter. Casey gets it out to Duke Costello. Over to Luke Detling. Geilinger. And Geilinger, oh, yep, he'll have it stolen there as it's knocked away and picked up by Buckeye Trail. Yeah, Rome knocked it away quickly down court to Egan. And it's cross court pass intercepted. This is Luke Detling. He'll put it up. And that'll be partially blocked. And good defensive Not play. Will be blocked, yeah. And a little hustle back down the floor there. That's Dodd has the ball knocked away from him by Costello. Out of bounds, it will be Warrior ball. We've played nearly two minutes, three nothing Shamrocks. Quick pass inside there to Perry. It's back to Rome. No jump shot on the foul line. That is by Dodd, and Travis Dodd. He's going to draw the foul. Okay, I missed that. I didn't see anybody near him. Let's see who they call that on. It's going to be on Costello. I'm not. Duker says I wasn't even close to him. I have to agree with him on that. We'll see. But that will put Travis yeah. Dodd to the foul line for a pair of shots. First one is off the front of the rim. No good. Second free throw here by Travis Dodd. Dodd, just a junior. Second free throw, around no good. Rebound comes off to Starr. Still 3-0. We've played two minutes. Detling playing the point, gets it out to Duke Costello. He drives, misses the layup. Rebounded there by Casey Carpenter and put back in. So Casey Carpenter with two points. Good hustle there by Casey. Warriors quickly down the floor. That's Cohen Egan. Gets the ball back up top down. The pass is deflected there by Detling and stolen. And he will be fouled as he goes up, and I think that's going to be on Dodd. Yes, it is. First foul on Buckeye Trail. Each team now with one foul. That will put Luke Detling to the line for a pair. I'll tell you what, a little fire here on the Barnesville bench here tonight. And Barnesville would be considered the underdog tonight, I'm sure. Yes, Detling's first free throw is up and good. Makes it now a 6 to nothing Barnesville lead. Here in the middle of the first quarter. One thing you always worry about from a coaching standpoint is Detling makes the second one is getting settled into your game early and getting the tournament nerves out of the way. And it's 7 0 Shamrocks here early. This is Rome. Dribbles aside, tries to get the ball inside. That is Brady Hastings who just checked in. Ball was knocked away and it's another trail turnover. That's three already now for the Warriors. Casey Carpenter gets it to Geilinger. Geilinger closed off there. This will be Casey Carpenter. He'll shoot the three. No good, but it'll be, Detling was going to get the rebound, but that will be off of Buckeye Trail, Gavin Rome. Another sub here for the Warriors is, is Kyer Egan, a sophomore, will check into the game. So we've seen two subs already for the Warriors. All right, Casey Carpenter with the ball on the left wing, gets it in to Duker. Duker to Detling, back to Carpenter, over to Geilinger. Geilinger's gonna shoot the three, and it's good! Wow! And Barnesville now with a 10 to nothing lead to start this game. Cohen Egan across midcourt here, gets the ball to Dodd on the right side. Again, the zone defense here by the Shamrocks. Pass inside for Hastings. Almost Deflect, lost it there, but deflected away. Picked up there by Egan, front of the rim, no good. Rebound off to Costello. And Duca goes up and he will be fouled. And he will be fouled there by Cohen Egan, I think. Yes, he will. And he'll go to the line with a chance to make it too. And Buckeye Trail and Coach Greg Strasser have seen enough for this. They will call a timeout. Yeah, he'll use a 30 second timeout. Let's go ahead and keep it here. 
And we mentioned some of those other games tonight, you know, you know they have interest around the, uh, our listing area there. Morgan is at Maysville tonight. That's over on Nash Icon. Uh, Philo at John Glenn on WILE. And Caldwell at Shadyside on WWKC. Also tonight, West Muskingum is at Garraway. Shenandoah at Monroe Central. And Meadowbrook at Tri-Valley. So lots of tournament backs, basketball available around As we there said, tonight. Division three and t four tonight. Yeah, some division two is playing yeah. depending on 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 who had Which buys. Pretty what? much every school in Eastern Ohio is in one of those divisions, so a lot of them playing this evening. But you know, what a start here for the Shamrocks. And Costello going to the line now, trying to increase this ten to nothing Barnesville lead here at 4:30 remaining in the opening period. Duker shot, no good. He'll get one more. That one also no good. Fight for the rebound there, and it comes down to Buckeye Trail. This is Kyer Egan across midcourt. Dodd on the left. Dribbles inside over to Cohen Egan. Back to Kyer and back to Cohen on the side. Again, drive in the lane. Left-handed left shot there by Kyer Egan. Trail will maintain their possession. This is Dodd now tries to get the ball to Egan in the corner and it's be knocked away and out of bounds there. Uh, Carpenter deflected the ball. Again, a couple of subs back in here. We have Jet Giese in for the first time tonight and also Gavin Rome returning. And wait till we get the officials holding up here. And the reason they're holding things up, I think the Warriors had. And six, one of the subs didn't come out. Yeah, the Warriors for a moment there had six players on the floor, but they caught that and they made the change. So this is Geesey now. He drives inside, and the Warriors looking for somebody to put the ball in the basket here in the opening quarter. Gavin Rome gets the ball to Hastings and drop inside there to Perry. He'll go up strong. His shot no good. Rebound off to Starr. Nice strong rebound there by Tayson Starr. Luke Detling brings it up, gets it to Geilinger. Geilinger reverse, double teamed. And during that double team, Shane Stevens will call a timeout for Barnesville. What, 3.32 left in the opening period. It's 10-0 Barnesville. Let's step aside for quick message. Discover it all at Village Hardware and Rental. Find quality Milwaukee tools, general hardware, electrical supplies, Valspar paint with... <laughs> Discover it all at Village Hardware and Rental. Find quality Milwaukee tools, general hardware, electrical supplies, Valspar paint with color matching and more. Need equipment? They've got rentals from bulldozers to bowl floats. With an indoor lumberyard, pipes, culverts, and sacrete, they've got your construction needs covered. Visit 265 South Chestnut Street, Barnesville, and support local businesses. Village Hardware and Rental wishes both teams the best of luck tonight. Back here at Buckeye Trail, where Barnesville has a 10 to nothing lead with 327 to go in the first quarter. Brady Hastings pulls down that rebound off the Asa Geilinger three-point miss. This is Hastings out. High post, they try to get the ball inside to Perry. Having a hard time doing it, Charlie Perry will go up and finally a ball rolls in. Charlie Perry with Warriors first bucket of the game. All right, as you can see, a full court pressure here. Ball comes in, Barnesville breaks it. Duke Costello will shoot the three, it's too hard and that will be rebounded by Rome. And Gavin Rome with that rebound, he'll bring the ball down now. 10-2 Shamrocks. This is Egan up top. Again, getting the ball into Hastings in the high post. Giese's going to put the ball down, goes inside to Perry once again, who drives baseline and scores. Charlie Perry with his second bucket. It's now 10-4. Pressure. Gets it in the star. Comes in there, and it'll be knocked away, but Luke Detling in the right place. And it comes right into... That was Casey Carpenter. Sorry, I had an official my way and couldn't see, but Casey missed the first one. Got his rebound, got, put it in. Yeah, Geilinger, I think, had the shot there and okay. bounced away. A three-point shot now by the, the Warriors. That is Jet Giese, no good. Rebound there to Perry. He'll drive inside. His shot off the rim, tipped up again, and out of bounds, and that will be 
Barnesville basketball. And now Mason McQuain will check in now. So we said Trail would probably play nine players, and they have played nine here in the first quarter. 10-4, or 12-4, excuse me, Shamrocks. Barnesville has yet to make a substitution, and they're gonna call Taysom Starr as he tried to split that double team. Got to call him for a travel, and that's the first turnover of the game for Barnesville. I think 55 it, to go in the first quarter. And gets that pressure there, started and wanted to get that ball and split the double team, and he just took an extra step before he put the ball on the floor. This is Hastings. He'll shoot the 15-footer from the lane, no good. And Warriors very cold here in the early going. Luke Dentling with that rebound. And, and ball's knocked away by Gavin. Rome on the far sideline and out of bounds. It will be Barnesville basketball. 141 left opening period. 12-4 Shamrocks. Ball will come in to Detling. Detling back to start to Detling. Detling will set up the play. And Shamrocks can afford to show a little patience here for, you know, with 90 seconds left in the opening period. Casey Conner, ball is not able to hold on to it goes out the Buckeye Trail. This is Rome all the way down the floor. He's going to go to the hoop, and there's going to be a foul prior to him going to the hoop. His layup went in, but the foul was called. And it's going to be a Casey Carpenter, and it was before the shot, so it will be Trail's ball out of bounds underneath. And this will be uh, Rome in bounds. Nice cut down the lane there by McQuain, who just checked into the game last time. An offensive rebound there by Perry. And he will be fouled. And you can see where the, the, the Warriors waiting to get the ball inside. You know, Charlie Perry, six foot four, has a height advantage inside. And that foul was on Geilinger. First free throw, good. Buckeye Trail now one for three tonight from the free throw line. That's 12-5, all five Buckeye Trail points here by Charlie Perry. Now all six by Perry as he hits the second free throw. And it's now, it was 10 nothing at one time. It's now 12-6, Shamrocks. A little 2-2-1 pressure this time. Yep, Tayson Starr gets it up to Detling and they break it. Now they'll set their offense up. And Buckeye trailing his own defense. Yeah, dropping back out of that 2-2-1 two -two press into a zone. Tayson Starr thinks about the three, decides not to. Geilinger will shoot the three too hard. Costello comes down with the rebound. It comes out to Detling, now to Duker Costello to Detling. Geilinger, Barnesville being patient. They may just wait and hold it here for a second. Coach is yelling, hold it. So they'll play for the last shot with 25 seconds to go in this quarter. And this will be Detling. He must not have heard it, but it banks in. Hey, they'll take it. Three three-pointers now for the Shamrocks. And of turnover as the Warriors hurried the ball down the floor and turned it over once again. So the Shamrocks will still have an opportunity for that final shot of the quarter. And that's four turnovers now for the Warriors. 15 seconds. Barnesville will take their time, work the ball up against his press. Now they break the line. Gets it in the Dukers, seven seconds. Five, this will be a three-pointer here from Starr, no good. Rebounded there by Buckeye Trail, but the buzzer will go off. And at the end of one quarter, it is Barnesville 15 and Buckeye Trail six. We'll be back after this. How can you select from insurance companies offering you lizards or ducks? When it comes to protection for your home and auto, you want a company that provides quality insurance products and personalized, fair, friendly claims service. WB Green Insurance represents Westfield Insurance. Their reputation is based on sharing knowledge and building trust. Westfield has been around the neighborhood over 150 years. WB Green Insurance welcomes the opportunity to quote your home, car, and business insurance. Don't be fooled by lizards and ducks. Call 439-1329. You're watching High School Basketball on ABC Sports. For all things basketball and to view our upcoming game schedule, visit yourradioplace.com. Back here at Buckeye Trail where the Shamrocks lead the Warriors 15-6 after one full quarter. 
Yeah, and just, uh, Barnes though with three three-pointers. Yeah, yeah. Asa, Asa Gollinger with uh, two three-pointers there for six points. Also getting five points from Luke Detling, four from Casey Carpenter there for their 15. All six Buckeye trail points scored by Charlie Perry. And it will be Shamrock's ball to start period two. The pass will come from Starr into Detling. He'll penetrate, then get it out to Geilinger. Trail staying in that zone. Well, maybe not. Now I think they did yeah. go back man, Mark. Yep. Had the watch there for a minute. Now let's see they are. Taysen Starr almost loses it, but he gets it off to Detling. Detling back over to Starr. Detling. Once has it knocked away, this will be Star. Barnesville right now, they've got a nine point lead. No pass, but Star throws it away. Yeah, Gavin Rome with the steal all the way down the floor. And the pass there to Travis Dodd for the layup is good. So the Warriors convert that turnover into points. It's now 15 to eight, Barnesville. And we're going to have a foul. I think that's going to be on Cohen Egan. Yes, Cohen Egan, and that will be Egan's second foul. And we're going to get a sub back in now. Jet Giese will return for Egan. Warriors also with Gavin Rome, uh, Charlie Perry, Travis Dodd, and Donovan Geiger on the floor here to start the second quarter. The pass will come in to Detling. Bounce pass to Geilinger. To Costello from the corner. He'll shoot the three and hit it. Four three-pointers now for the Shamrocks. 18-8, Barnesville lead. Rome with the ball on top now against this Barnesville 2-3 zone, which has been very effective here thus far. Giese on the right. And this is Rome now We're on the left side. And it's, you know, they're looking inside, but Jim Shamrock's also done a pretty good job keeping the ball out of the paint. This is Geiger. He'll shoot off the baseline, and that's good. Donovan Geiger with his first bucket of the day, 18-10 Shamrocks. This will be a quick pass up to Casey Carpenter. Casey get over the Detling. Geilinger, he's going to put it in and get it back out to Duker. And they call him for a dribble. double dribble. He must have used two hands when yeah. he put the ball on the floor initially there. But the official, no hesitation with that call. Another sub here is Kyer Egan, a sophomore back in. And we'll get our first Barnesville substitution of the game as Braden Willis will check in and he'll give Detling a breather. Willis, a junior, good defender, and good three-point shooter. He'll play on the top in this 2-3 zone. So Donovan Geiger up on top now. Gives the ball to Dodd here on the left side. He'll put the ball on the floor, dribble inside, pull up and shoot a short jump shot, and it will be no good. Rebounded on the backside there by Carpenter. All right now, Bar Buckeye Trail will pull back now. Take off the press. And they'll play in this man. Casey Carpenter, back of his man up. Gets it over to, this will be a collision there, and I think they're gonna say. I think it's just out of bounds. Out of bounds, okay. Willis, Willis and Dodd collided there, and the ball went out of bounds. They say last touch by Dodd, so Barnes will have the ball right in front of the Buckeye Trail bench. Bounce pass comes in to Willis, Braden Willis. This will be a turnaround shot there by maybe had to force that up a little bit. Yeah, Perry with the uh, rebound. This is that was Geilinger. All the way down the floor, that is Egan, and he passes off, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul. And that will be his first, and I did not see who the Shamrock was there that defensively drew that charge. I think it was maybe Willis, Braden Willis. We're right here next to the Barnesville bench, and... Right when that happened, uh, Coach Shane Stevens was standing up. I couldn't see it. So, Starr gets it, loses it, but gets it back. He's pressured out top there, yeah. real hard there by Mason McQuain. This will be Casey Carpenter. He'll shoot the three. No good. Rebounded by Trail. And Perry with the ball. Now a little pressure there. Costello almost was able to sneak in behind him. This is McQuain. This is Dodd back to McQuain. I get the ball back on top there. This is Kyer Egan. He will now try to set things up here against the Barnesville zone. 
Travis Dodd has the ball, drives baseline out, looks to get the ball inside, and has the ball on the floor, and he'll get it to Hastings, and finally get the ball in the corner to Egan. His shot will be deflected, but right in front of the basket is Brady Hastings with the offensive rebound, and good. Shamrock faithful were yelling, or the, the Warrior faithful for a foul. Now the ball knocked away from Willis. This is Egan all the way down, his shot no good. This is Hastings on the board once again, and he'll be fouled. There's some life by Brady Hastings here to, on that, and it'll be a foul inside. That is on Geilinger, and that is Asa Geilinger's second foul. And that will send Brady Hastings to the line for a couple shots, but a couple offensive rebounds here by, by Hastings has kind of put a little life into this Warrior crowd. His first free throw, though, is no good. And Luke Dentling will check back in, and Geilinger's going to have a seat with two and, fouls. And the Shamrocks now are extremely small. And this, Nobody would, over six foot for this, uh, even over 5'10 for Barnes Hill. And the second free throw is no good, but the offensive rebound there to Charlie Perry. He'll get it and be fouled. And that will be two shots for him, and that foul will be on Casey Carpenter, and that is Carpenter's second foul. And there we saw the advantage of height there is Perry, yeah, six, six inches taller than yeah, anybody on the Barstow yeah, team. Yeah, six foot four, Charlie Perry in there and got that offensive rebound. His first free throw is no good. I have the uh, Warriors at currently two for seven at the foul that's, line. That's what I have, yes. And you're trailing by six points with 4.15 left in the opening half. You'd like to have a couple more mechs. And Perry now for his second shot. It's good. It's now 18-13, Barnesville, with just over four minutes left in the half. Okay, Barnes, uh, Buckeye Trail will come back with a press, and this will be Roan. He's pressuring, and a quick timeout. Had, had the ball there, giving some problems with Geilinger, or with um, Willis, and Coach Stevens will call a timeout. It, fear, fearful of a, a, a 10 second call there. So, you know, Coach Stevens able to get that timeout, though. So just about four minutes left in the opening half, 18-13. What Trail looked like they did there is jump into a little bit of a full-court man pressure with a little bit of run and jump. They were looking to double team. And uh, Willis having a little bit of trouble bringing that ball up against that pressure. And, it, and when that happens, you know, when if the guy guarding you need, leaves to double team the ball, then you need to, as a offensive player for the Shamrocks, you need to step to the middle of the floor, step toward the ball so they can find you. But, you know, we are at 18-13. Now the uh, Warriors, you know, finally getting the ball to go into the basket a little bit, but kind of a key time right here for Barnjo. As we said, you know, the, the definite height advantage right now by Buckeye Trail with a six-foot-four uh, player out there and uh, Charlie Perry and six-foot-three Brady Hastings and nobody taller than 5'10 out there for the Shamrocks right now. But 4.05 left in the opening half, a five-point Barnesville lead. It was 18-8 just a moment ago. It's now 18-13. So Barnesville will have the ball. Taysen Starr will throw it in. Detling's come back in, and he'll get it to Duke and Costello. Detling back to Costello. And what, what a Rome body got up top. And him there, and this will be Taysen Starr. And they're going to say he traveled before he put the shot up. He tried a, a quick power move in there. He called for a power. A lot of contact out front there. And then Coach Stevens and, having, and words with the official on the far side there about the contact up that he felt was a little too much up top. So the Warriors down here. This is Rome. He dribbles inside, trying to get a little penetration down. And the travel call on the baseline. Uh, didn't see that on the baseline move there by the Warriors. That's one where the fans are probably saying that might have been a makeup call. All right, so Barnesville ball. Again, uh, three-quarter court pressure by Trail. Detling will get it over the center court line. And, and he'll go around. They're going to call Rome on a, or on a reach. And that may have been kind of set up by uh, the Barnesville bench asking about a previous foul call. That will be the third foul on Buckeye Trail for the quarter, the first on Gavin Rome. All right, so the pass will come in to Detling. Started there by Rome. Casey Carpenter. 
Double teamed, and he'll get it over to Duker Costello. Duker, wow, and he, yeah, just about tackled there. And that'll be on Hastings. Hastings, I yeah. believe, yes. His first, that is four team fouls, so the next foul on the Warriors will put Barnesville at the line. Taysen Starr will take it out under his own basket. Pass will come in to Willis. He'll get it back to Starr, out to Duker. Detling. Inside, this will be Willis. Willis a three-pointer, and it's good. I think that's Willis's first shot attempt of the yes. game, but it's good for three. So back to an eight-point lead here for the Shamrocks. Five three-point shots tonight for Barnesville so far with a little under three minutes to go in the first half. Gavin Rome. 21-13. Yeah, Gavin Rome up top now. Barnes will stay in this zone. That's Geiger over in the side, back on top there to, to uh, Kyer Egan. Working the ball on the, on the perimeter. And Kyer Egan, a long three-point shot up top, is banked home by Donovan Geiger. First three-pointer of the game for Buckeye Trail. And it's it now was, a 21-16 lead for the Shamrocks. This will be a three-pointer by Willis, no good. Rebounded there by Geiger. Geiger with that rebound now comes down to the five-point deficit now on top of his room. This is Egan, his three-point shot is good. That's Kyer Egan with the three-pointer, and all of a sudden we have a two-point ball game. And this Detling. Guard by Rome, he'll look out, give it to Costello. Casey Carpenter in the corner. Now try to go around, they're gonna call an offensive foul, wow. And that's a third foul on Casey Carpenter. And that is a problem for the Shamrocks now, and he's going, Coach Stevens is gonna to have to send in Asa Geilinger, and Asa has two fouls. And that's the need there. You know, Geilinger cannot pick up his third here. But now the Warriors can tie the game or go ahead with a three here. A minute 49 left in the half. Rome lets the ball roll down the court there and picks it up at midcourt. Back up top there, using a high post there to Geiger. This is Dodd. They try to get the ball down inside there to Hastings. And we're going to get a foul. And that's not a good foul there no. by the Warriors because that is on Hastings, that's his second, but that is also the fifth foul on the Warriors of the half, so that's going to just put Barnesville at the foul line for the bonus. And, and again, as a coach, you hate to see that foul occurring 80 feet from the basket. Yeah. And that yeah, will- you're giving Barnesville a chance here to score two. And Detling will go to the line for the two shots. That one no good after he was two for two earlier in the game. Charlie Perry will check back in. He'll replace Brady Hastings for the Warriors with 1.38 left here in the first half. 21-19 in favor of Barnesville. Detling trying to make it a three-point lead, and he does. 22-19, Barnesville. Rome across midcourt. Warriors will try to set, get the ball to Egan in the high post. This is Dodd, long three-pointer, rims out, no good. Rebound, Star. Stolen away by Charlie Perry, and his layup is good. Charlie Perry, and we've got a one-point game with 119 left in the half. And this Star having trouble with the ball. He gets it to Detling, who quickly gets it over the line. This will be... A uh, fourth shot there, maybe a little bit too much for a little bit quick. Willis, yeah. The ball knocked away. We've got a wild scramble on the floor. Costello knocked it away. We're going to get a Buckeye trail foul, I believe, here. Travis Dodd will be called for that foul. That's his second, and that will put Costello at the line. One minute to go in the first half. Barnesville up by one. Kind of a wild sequence there yeah. on that Costello. Bodies flying everywhere. Costello at the line for a pair. Shot is good. Costello missed a pair in the first quarter. Barnesville now two for, or four for eight. Jet Giese, I believe, there just checked back in for the Warriors. No good for... Duker on that one, rebounded Don by Trail. Donovan Geiger has the rebound. He'll come across midcourt. 
Geiger at six foot two, handling the ball out front now, less than a minute, two point lead. Looks like maybe the Warriors will hold the ball here. If not for the last shot, they're gonna be extra patient here. Up on top, this is Gavin Rome. This is Egan on the right wing. Shot's no good, offensive rebound to the Warriors. Back out to Rome, that offensive rebound there was by Geiger. And this is Rome, now he'll back it out there and he'll be pressured a little bit by Costello. Now we're 23 seconds left in the half. This is Giese. Ball's deflected, knocked away, stolen there by Costello, and he'll be fouled in the backcourt. And this will be... That'll be on Rome, I believe. Yes, that is Rome, his second. This will be the third opportunity for the, the Shamrocks at the line here for two shots here since the bonus. And we've got a couple of subs ready to come in here, and Costello will shoot a pair there and miss the first. Jack Phillips, a senior, be his first appearance in the game. He'll come in for Barnsdale. Well, there's a good chance right to get Geilinger out of the game here with 15 seconds left. And that's what uh, Coach just told Ace as he walked by us here. That one is good. So it is now a three-point lead. And a whistle. And Buckeye gonna, Trail's going to take a timeout. Hey, during this 30-second timeout, let's you know, give one more you know, shout-out to our sponsors here tonight. Uh, you know, a lot of new people on board with us here. Patrons, Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WB Green Insurance, Valentine Insurance, Smithburger Realty, Barnesville Do It Best, Rumor Loudon, Doan Ford, West 40 Auto Sales, Village Hardware and Rental, and Hendershot Detailing. And thank you for your sponsorship of this game tonight. All right, 15 seconds to go. Barnesville ahead 24-21 here in the, right at the end of the half. And Buckeye Trail will get the ball. They'll get the full length of the floor. Both teams have used a pair of timeouts here in the first half, but the Warriors uh, trailing by three will come down. They get the ball in there. That is Kyer Egan. Across midcourt with 10. Trail can tie it with the three pointer. And it and and passed stolen, stolen by Willis. And we'll see, he's going to go all the way in, and he will be fouled. And he will miss the shot. And what are they going to call it? Oh, it's an offensive foul. foul call. And it is on Willis, his first. Trail will have two seconds here. Donovan Geiger to inbound the ball. He's going to throw it deep down the floor. And it's caught there by Giese. His shoot of three and no good. And he didn't have much time there. So we have reached halftime here at Buckeye Trail High School, sectional basketball play. You know, good first half by the Shamrocks. We are at half. Barnesville, 24, Buckeye Trail, 21. Back with some Here's a home comfort tip from Rumor Loudon Incorporated. When faced with a heating or air conditioning repair, it can be confusing on which company to call. Consider this, Rumor Loudon guarantees any parts in the labor to change it for a year. You might think it's new. How likely is it to go bad? Well, many things aren't made like they used to be, and unfortunately it does happen. Sometimes we don't have a choice on parts because we need to comply with your brand specifications. Regardless, we want our customers to know that we will stand behind those parts and the labor to change it should it fail within a year of the repair. Now, our regular trip charge applies, and we do not include oil nozzles and filters, but that still leaves a lot of items over many types and brands that are covered. Also, remember to maintain your equipment. Just like a car, it needs to be checked over for wear and tear. Even just a loose wire can leave you stranded. Plus, air filters need to be checked and then changed or cleaned as needed. Call Rumor Loudon in Barnes or St. Clairsville to schedule a tune-up, and check out rumorloudon.com for lots of home comfort information. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association Tonight in High School Hoops. Now here's your host, Eric Reeser. By now, you're likely aware that starting next school year, seven high school sports in the Buckeye State will be expanding their tournament divisions. The Ohio High School Athletic Association and its board of directors voted unanimously to expand boys and girls basketball, girls volleyball, baseball, and softball from four to seven divisions, while boys and girls soccer will expand to five divisions. Again, this all starts next school year. 
So both soccers will have five divisions coming this fall. In deciding the number of divisions for sports, the OHSAA will use a sliding scale that accounts for how many schools field a team in a certain sport. For example, if there are 700 or more schools in Ohio fielding a high school basketball team, then there will be seven tournament divisions for basketball, hence the move for boys and girls hoops from four to seven divisions. More divisions means more games, more sites needed, and more, more. Tim Streed's the media relations director for the Ohio High School Athletic Association, and I'll speak with him on how his organization will handle the increase in resources needed that's next this is the ohio news network the onn daily podcast get a recap of all the day's news from across the state our winner affiliate wbns tv in columbus has more Haley kirby reporting in downtown toledo from the state house kevin landers onn canton onn affiliate wkyc tv in cleveland explains in marietta brett wharf onn news emma henderson in genoa the onn daily podcast listen at onnradio.com or wherever you download your favorite podcast from the Ohio News Network. In Ohio, public education matters. And every day, Ohio's public school educators use their united voice to advocate for the supports and resources our public schools need so every child thrives. No exceptions. I'm Ohio Education Association President Scott DeMauro, and on behalf of our 120,000 members, OEA is proud to sponsor tonight's game. Because great public schools are a winning playbook for Ohio, and Ohio is stronger when we stand together to cheer for our students' success. This, this is ONN. I'm Eric Reeser. Tim Street is my guest. He's the media relations director for the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tim, with more, with more games, more divisions, more opportunity, uh, comes the need for more resources. How will the OHSAA address the increase in resources needed to hold more? Sure. Well, the, the good thing about the sports we're talking about is that every school in Ohio already makes the tournament in those sports. So it's a lot different uh, scenario than when we added a round to the football playoffs, because certainly that was uh, a whole bunch of more schools in the playoffs. It was a whole nother round. But if we're just talking basketball, every school already makes the tournament. So it's not any additional games. Uh, But what we are looking at is more games at the regional level and more games at the state tournament level. So the the tickets go up a few dollars uh, at those later rounds, which we're going to need because there, as we've talked about, there are more expenses at the regional and state tournament level, and so our expenses go up. Um, and uh, but you know we we've looked at those numbers. We we think it's overall a revenue neutral expansion, and and that's an important factor because. Certainly, when when people hear expansion, they automatically think, oh, it must be for more revenue. And and that's not the case with this uh, particular expansion. You know, every school is already in and our expenses go up at the end of the tournament. So we anticipated being revenue neutral. Um, Certainly getting that message out is something we're trying to do. Um, because this certainly was in no way driven by a, a need for increased revenue. Tim, are there any other sports that uh, you guys will be looking to add more divisions in the next year or so? Yeah, we 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 will. Um, we think that track and field is most likely the next one that that will need more divisions. We've had several meetings about that. We've committed to them that we uh, we need to work with them on that. Um, along with track and field, could be cross country. You know that that could be um, uh, the next sport that follows track and field. Um, we, I, as you can imagine, we've heard from a lot of our uh, sports and coaches um, after the big announcement on Thursday. With uh, you know, when will you take a look at our sport? Um, uh, there, there certainly will be a lot of conversations in the coming months and years about what will be the next sport to add, but. But uh, I think that track and field uh, will be the next one where we add divisions. You're listening to High School Basketball on 93 BNV, WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield. You're listening to High School Basketball We're back on here 93 at BNV, at WBNV, High School, WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield. Where the Barnesville Shamrocks off to a good start with a 10 point early lead, and at halftime leads the Buckeye Trail Warriors 24 to 21. 
All right. Shame Rock's back out on the floor here. Just, you know, a little still better than three minutes left before halftime. Mark, what's what do you got there on some individual? Let's go through the team uh, scores here. Or, or yeah, team, uh, team, team stats. stats, yes, first. Barnesville um, and Trail, as you would expect, a close game. The stats pretty close. Barnesville, 7 of 19 from the field, 37%. Buckeye Trail, 8 of 21 for 38%. Barnesville, of the seven shots they've made, five of them have been three pointers. Buckeye Trail of their eight shots, two three-pointers. Uh, rebounds, Barnesville 10, Buckeye Trail 16. Turnovers, both teams have nine. And the free throw shooting, Barnesville is five of 10, and Buckeye Trail is three of eight from the free throw line. Individual scoring here in the first half. Again, first of all, for the visiting Shamrocks with that three-point lead. Casey Carpenter has a, had a couple of two-point buckets in the first quarter for four points. Um, Taysen Starr did not score in the first half. Luke Detling, a three-point field goal and three for four at the line for six points. Uh, Duker Costello, a three-point field goal and three or two of six at the foul line for five points. Asa Geilinger, a pair of three-point goals for six points. Braden Willis with a three-pointer, three points. And Jack Phillips played briefly, did, did not score. So once again for the Shamrocks, Geilinger with six, Detling with six, Costello with five, Carpenter with four, and Willis with three. For the Warriors, nine players participated in the first half there. Uh, Gavin Rome, a starter, did not score. Uh, Cohen Egan did not score. Both of them had a couple of fouls. Charlie Perry, a game high, nine points. He had three field goals, three of four at the line. Travis Dodd with a field goal for two. He was 0 of 2 at the foul line. Donovan Geiger had five points in the second quarter, had a two-pointer and a three-pointer. Uh, Jet Giese did not score. Uh, Kyer Egan off the bench had a three-point goal in the second quarter. Uh, Brady Hastings of field goal 0 for 2 at the line for two points. And Mason McQuain did not score. So once again for the Warriors, Perry with nine, Geiger with five. Kyer Egan with three, Dodd with two, and Hastings with two. It was 15-6 Shamrocks at the end of one quarter. A 15-9 edge by the Warriors in the second quarter puts us at 24-21 Barnesville at the half. Looking at a couple other scores at, here at halftime. Um, Shadyside leading Caldwell 35-30 at the half. Uh, Fort Fry leading at Martins Ferry halftime 31-26. Monroe Central 24-15 at the half. Um, Tri-Valley leads Meadowbrook 39-10 also at the half. And River leading Toronto 23-14 at the half. To Shockton 21, Sandy Valley 21. That is also a halftime score. John Glenn leading Philo 36-21. Again, that is halftime. So lots of district opening games at halftime right now as we are right here, but we are just oh, getting yeah. ready to start the third quarter. Yeah. yeah, just real quick here, once again, while we got a moment here, to recognize our sponsors once again, Hendershot Detailing, Village Hardware and Rental, West 40 Auto Sales, Doan Ford, Rumor Loudon, Barnesville Do It Best, Smithburger Realty, Valentine Insurance, WB Green Insurance, and Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance. Warriors ball start period number three. Barnesville leading by three points, 24-21. This is Gavin Dodd, or excuse me, Gavin Rome. Cohen Egan on the left side. Warriors have four players with two fouls. In the corner, now pass inside to Perry. His shot inside against Geilinger, and it goes out of bounds. It will be Barnesville ball. For the Shamrocks, Casey Carpenter with three fouls and Asa Geilinger with a pair. And for the Warriors, Gavin Rome, Cohen Egan, Brady Hastings, and Travis Dodd all with a pair of fouls. Geilinger, Casey Carpenter will shoot from the elbow. Too hard. Rebounded there by Buckeye Trail. Yeah, Cohen Egan with that rebound now. Rome gets the ball inside. To Dodd, they try to get the pass inside there to Perry. It's knocked away, and it will be a Buckeye Trail turnover. Ten turnovers now for the Warriors. 
they're really trying to get the ball inside to parry, but yeah. you know, they're really trying to, almost forcing it in there. Barnesville collapsing in there and stopping that. Ball after two, right? This would be Geilinger. Too hard on that three-pointer. Geilinger hit his first two shots of the game, but has not scored since. Rome on top. Barnesville's going to stay in that 2-3 zone. It's been effective. Um, it was very effective a couple of weeks ago in the second half against Belair, a game that we did. And ball's knocked away. But Geiger picks it up, goes inside. His shot will not go. Offensive rebound to Perry. Another offensive rebound. This is Egan. Finally, Starr comes down with it, and they're going to call a foul there. Somebody reached in. That's going to be on Travis Dodd, I believe. Yes, and that is Dodd's third foul. Full foul. court pressure. Foul trouble may be a big factor here in this second half. Tayson Starr, Detling. Detling gets it across the center court line over to Geilinger. And he will pick up his dribble foot, or so says the official. And that'll be a turnover on the Shamrocks. They now have 10. Geilinger felt like he kept the pivot foot and, and then moved moved the other foot twice. And if that would be, yeah. And Coach Stevens here you know, says, you know, he never moved his pivot foot. And I think Shane's right. This is. The, Rome gets the ball to Egan. And Geiger down in the corner there. Hastings checked in during that last dead ball for the Warriors. Rome gets the ball inside to Hastings. His layup is good. So work in the paint by Brady Hastings in the second quarter to kind of help get Buckeye Trail back in this game. This will be a pass over to Starr, to Detling. Or Duke or he'll get it to Detling. Well, so pressure. Penetrate, put the shot up, underhand scoop, no good. And there's another rebound for Hastings. Warriors can take the lead with the basket. Rome backs out, resets. This is Geiger now, left side. Inside pass there to Hastings. Pivot round, no good on the shot. Kind of force that shot up off balance. And this will be Detling. He'll put it up. It goes in, and he's fouled. Nice job there, Detling protecting the ball front with his body, and then able to put it in while he got fouled. Nice strong move to the hoop there by Detling. That will be a foul on Donovan Geiger, his first. 26-23 lead for the Shamrocks. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Detling's free throw is good. That would be a four-point lead now for Barnsell. Detling is now four or five at the line. This is Egan. Gives the ball to Perry. His little runner in the lane off the rim. No good. Shane Rocks with the rebound. Tayson Starr. A lot of rebounds so far tonight. He'll bring it up and get it over the Detling. Detling will penetrate, go in, and he'll have a shot blocked. And they say the ball hit off of Detling as he was falling to the ground there. Well, after Detling had a nice move to the hoop and got the three-point play before, that one maybe kind of forced his way yeah. into traffic there against some height. And it didn't work that time. So Gavin Rome down. This is McQueen who just checked in during the last break. Egan, the three-point shot is good. That is Cohen Egan's first points of the game. And the Warriors once again back to within one. Detling, Starr gets it across the line to Casey Carpenter. Casey moves in. Jump shot, no good. Rebound to Perry. Here comes the Warriors with another chance to take the lead. Egan, it's about to McQueen. He'll pull up off the baseline. His shot's no good. And it will be rebounded eventually there by Dentling. And we're going to get a foul call in the backcourt. A little too much aggression there by Hastings. And it will be a foul on Brady Hastings. And that is Hastings' third foul. Jet Giese back in the game for the... Warriors. Again, that's a foul, you know, 85 feet from the basket. Maybe 80 feet. <laughs> but, you know, really a foolish back, and especially by Hastings being his third foul. That's you know, not a good play there by Brady. Right. Trail will just fall back now into their defense. Duke Costello, he'll pull up. Shot good. Every time the Warriors get to within a point here, Barnes will come back with a big play. 
Inside move there by Egan. His shot may have been deflected off the front of the iron. Giese has the ball now. He'll shoot a three, misses badly, but be saved by Geiger. And the Warriors still keeping possession. Egan to Geiger, his shot again. Taysen Starr with another rebound. The Warriors have missed some shots badly here. Some air balls here on the home court, which you don't think would normally happen. This will be Detling, and he'll lose it. Egan gets the ball quickly down to Giese. His layup is good. Jet Giese with his first points of the game. And once again, the Warriors back to within a point. The Warriors have never led in this game, and we have not been tied since we were 0-0. 2.45 now to go in the third quarter. Barnesville up by one. Detling with the ball up high. He'll penetrate, get it over to Starr. Geidinger will shoot the three-pointer. Good! That is the sixth three-pointer now of the game for Barnesville. And once again, the Shamrocks with the answer. Two and a half minutes left in the quarter. Four-point Barnesville lead. This is Giese up top. Geiger over on the left side, gets a screen, gets the ball over here to Egan, who'll drive baseline, goes strong to the hoop and score. Cohen Egan with his fifth point of the quarter. It's 32-30, Shamrocks. Duke or Costello, he will get it up quick. He'll pull back, shoot the three. No good. Maybe a little quick on that shot. Yep. Rebound there to the Warriors. This is Geiger down. He dribble inside and lose it. Stolen away by Costello. He'll get it over to the Detling. Definitely a little bit too far ahead, had to pull it back. And, and he's going to be fouled. Fouled in the corner. And that foul is going to be on Mason McQuain. His first. Kyer Egan and Gavin Rome will check back into the lineup here for the Warriors. Barnesville's got the sub in this third quarter. 32 30. Shamrocks with 145 left in the third quarter. This will be an inside pass to Geilinger. He'll get it outside to Dentling, over to Starr, to Casey Carpenter. Luke Dentling, they well, don't have it stolen. Room with the steal, will dribble all the way down. His layup will be good, and for the first time tonight, we are tied. That is Gavin Room's first bucket of the game. We're tied at 32, 120 left in the quarter. That's the third quarter. Detlin will walk it up, no pressure. He's going to pull in, and he will put up the layup, and it'll be no good, but he will be fouled. And that's going to be the fifth Warrior foul of the quarter, and that will be the second foul of the game on Kyer Egan. The Barnesville for every Buckeye trail foul now the rest of this quarter will shoot, but there's only a mid-11 in it. Detlin... Been at the free throw line quite a bit tonight. Yes, this free throw coming up by Detling will be his seventh free throw. He's five of six thus far, and that puts Barnesville back on top by a point. Free throw in and out. Rebound there to McQuain of the Warriors. Quickly down the floor, Egan gets the ball to Rome, will drive baseline, goes up for a shot, and we had a whistle, and it'll be a foul and it will be on Tace and Star, but I think it was before the shot. Yes, it will be out of bounds. That's Barnesville's first foul of the quarter. Warriors will inbound the ball there. Rome gets the ball clear out top there to Kyer Egan. One minute left in the quarter, 33-32 Shamrocks. Again, Egan up top gives it to Brother Cohen on the inside there to McQuain. Again, nowhere to go. This is Egan, three-point shot, rims out, no good, and we get a whistle. And I think we're going to get a Buckeye trail foul on the rebound, and that will be a shooting situation here for Barnesville. And the foul is on Gavin Rome, his third. Or, excuse me, no, it's not on Rome. It's on uh, McQuain, his second. And Casey Carpenter was the one fouled. He will go to the line. He'll shoot two. I have trail for 15 team fouls, the Shamrocks for eight. So Casey Carpenter, that shot is good. I believe that's his first free throw of the game. 
as Casey Carpenter's first attempt, yes. Okay, Casey, uh, he's a pretty good free throw shooter. He makes the first one. His second one, good. Barnesville now with a back to a three point lead, 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Kyer Egan has the ball on top. This is Cohen Egan. Let's see if Shamrocks could stay back in their zone here. Warriors may hold it for one here. This is Rome, 30 seconds. 35 32, Shamrocks. And I think Shamrocks will be content just to stay back here. This is Egan at the high post. This is Rome. He'll shoot out of the corner, three pointer, rim out, no good. Perry with the rebound, loses possession, and he'll go out of bounds off of Perry's. Uh, I think the official just pointed the wrong way, which kind of set off the trail crowd here. It will be Buckeye Trail's ball underneath as, it, as Perry lost the ball there. It hit off a leg of a shamrock. So with 12 seconds left, Warriors then bound under their own basket. Get the ball in the corner. Egan, 10 seconds. Back to Egan in the corner. Three-pointer, rims no good. Rebound to Carpenter, four seconds. And a last second shot here by Dentley, no good. But again, Barnesville still leading. After three complete quarters, they are ahead over Buckeye Trail, 35 to 32. We'll be back in a minute. Looking for top-notch hardware? Check out the spring specials going on now through the end of June at Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. The best part, they're open seven days a week for your convenience. Good luck, seniors from Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. They've got everything you need. Go Rocks from Barnesville Do It Best Hardware. You're watching High School Basketball on ABC Sports. For all things basketball and to view our upcoming game schedule, visit yourradioplace.com. Quarter number four, ready to get underway here at Buckeye Trail High School. The Warriors, homestanding Warriors trailing by three points. Barnesville 35, Buckeye Trail 32. The Warriors have never led in the game and we've had one tie. And every time that the Warriors have made a little run to get back to the, the one tie or back to within a point, the Shamrocks have had an answer. Foul issues, two different quarters here. The Warriors have went over the five limit and the, the Shamrocks have been able to shoot the bonus and that's been an advantage for Barnesville. Now, one thing to consider, Barnesville has rarely subbed in this game. These five guys have played almost the entire time. We'll see what kind of shape they're in here. And this will be a three-pointer by Gallinger, no good. This is Rome down, gets the ball out to, to uh, Geiger, inside pass and will be out of bounds and will be a turnover for the Warriors. Detling, he'll just dribble it right through the, and he'll come all the way up, put it in, good, wow. Tell you, Luke Detling has just been quicker to the hoop than the Warrior defense here several times tonight. Five point lead, Shamrocks, this is Rome. Long three point shot off the rim, no good by Geiger. And Geiger gets his own rebound, spins in the lane, gets it back to Dodd, and he'll force his way inside and score. Travis Dodd has battled some foul trouble tonight, has four points, and seven minutes left, three-point lead, Barnesville. All right, this way, Detling will decide not to drive. He'll pitch it back out, Casey Carpenter. This will be Detling in the left corner. He'll fake, go in. He'll go in for the left and put it in. Wow, Detling's having a game tonight. A great fake out front there and a score by Detling. Five point, Barnesville lead, 6.45 to go in the game. Perry puts the ball on the floor and goes to the hoop, draws contact. It's gonna be a blocking foul on Taysen Starr. And that will be out of bounds. We'll get Brady Hastings back in the game with his three fouls and he'll be, he will replace Donovan Geiger. Warriors to inbound the ball underneath. Got a little break here as we need a towel to wipe up some perspiration on the floor. 39-34, Barnesville, 6-43 remaining in the game. Fourteen points for uh, Luke Detling 
tonight. That might be and, his high game of the year. And he is, is just, he's been the quicker player on the floor here most of the night as far as taking the ball to the hoop. Warriors then bound the ball after that delay. And long pass out there to uh, Cohen Egan. This is Rome. Gets a pick from Hastings up top now. Reverses the floor there to, to Dodd. Looking inside. Perry posting up inside, trying to get him the ball. Again, this Barnesville zone defense has been very good. Egan once again dribbling up top. A little pressure there up top, but Barnesville staying in this zone as they have been all night. And we're going to get a timeout here by Barnes or by Buckeye Trail. It will be a full timeout. So it's 6:13 left in the game. Barnesville 39, Buckeye Trail 34. We'll take a break. Don Ford is proud to introduce the ultimate adventure companion, the Bronco four-door advanced 4x4 Badlands. With a powerful 2.3-liter EcoBoost engine and seven-speed manual transmission, conquer any terrain with confidence, featuring a soft top, four-inch lift, and massive 35-inch tires. Adventure knows no bounds. Stay connected and in control with an eight-inch digital screen while enjoying added convenience with power-heated mirrors and auto high-beam headlamps, plus equipped with a Smitty-built winch. Be prepared for any challenge. Don't miss out on this incredible deal. DoneFord.com. Back here at Buckeye Trail High School where the Shamrocks lead 39-34, just over six minutes left. Once again, we'll say thank you to all of our sponsors here, Buckeye Mutual, Buckeye Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, Doan Ford, WB Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Valentine Insurance, Village Hardware and Rental, Hendershot Detailing, Smithburger Realty, Barnesville Do It Best, and Rumor Loudon. Thank you to those sponsors. Warriors to inbound now, 6-13 left in the game. I want to mention a very nice crowd here today from both teams. Perry now clear on top. Looks like the trail's trying to move some personnel around here to try to get some open looks here. Perry now on the perimeter. And this is Rome up top. Shamrock's just content to stay back in that zone. Pass inside here to Egan. His tough layup inside is good. Cohen Egan. He now has seven. Warriors still trail by three. 540 remaining. Luke Dentling guarded by Egan, and he'll run into a crowd there and have the ball stolen. This is Hastings all the way down. Drop pass now to Rome. Perry, he'll shoot to three. Rim no good. And rebound, rebound there star. by Tayson Starr again. This will be Geilinger. He'll shoot the three. It's short. A little quick, a little quick on the yep. shot there. Rome now down, dribbles inside. He'll put up a tough shot in there, good. And Rome, no good, a really tough shot. Both teams coming up empty on a couple possessions now, five minutes left, three-point Shamrock lead. All right, then this will be a shot. That it will be a foul, Detling, okay. I've got an official and two coaches standing in front of me. Detling will get fouled by Cohen Egan, his third. First in the quarter, Kyrie Egan and Jet Giese both checking back in here for the Warriors. Uh, they were saying on the floor it was not a shot. Detling was at the foul line waiting, and official Scott Andrews says it was on the floor. All right, so it'll be an out-of-bounds play. Starr will get it out to Geilinger. A little contact, but not enough to be called, and he'll get the ball to Detling up high. Yeah, great game by Luke Detling running the point here for the Shamrocks. He's pressured there by Giese. And this will be Geilinger. He'll shoot, and no good. And it'll be thrown out and recovered there by Buckeye Trail. Saved by Perry, gets to Hastings. Now Egan, three-point shot in the corner, and it will stick. Giese's shot will... Stick between the rim and the backboard. That will go to the possession arrow, and it is Buckeye Trail. Trail's arrow, so they will get to keep possession of the ball. That's one I'd like to see a rule change. When a team shoots and it gets stuck on the rim, I'd like to see the defense be awarded the yep, ball. I agree. But the Warriors will take the ball on alternating possession. This is Kyrie Egan, gets the ball into Cohen. And inside move there by Kyer Egan. His left-handed move is good. So Kyer Egan, and once again, the Warriors within one. 
4-15 to go in the game. Star, the Duker. Shamrocks have had an answer every time Trail gets within a point. One time the Warriors did get a tie. And finally, Detlin will get some pressure to put it up. This will be over to Star. This will be a three-pointer by Duker Costello. No good. Rebound comes down to Detling and shot back up by Casey. No good. And this will be Detling, and he will miss the layup. The ball comes down to Star. Stolen and away. Casey there. Carpenter what? comes out with it. Borns will several opportunities there, but they still have possession. Three and a half minutes to go in the game. Barnesville up by one point. Wow. <laughs> a lot of contact out front there, and Duke Det Detling was called for a walk. Travel. And, you know, oh, man. Coach, Coach Shane Stevens says he was still dribbling the basketball. And he was. Been a little shaky here tonight by the official aiding, but for both teams. But a traveling call nonetheless. The Warriors now with 3.20 left in the game have a chance to take a lead. They have not led in the game. Egan gets the ball there to Geiger. This is Giese on top. He'll go inside all the way to the hoop. His shot will not go, and it will be knocked around out of bounds. It will be Warrior ball. Gavin Rome will check back in. And we'll stop here while we get their subs together here. When one sub comes in, somebody has to leave. Now we have five on the floor for the Warriors. Rome will now inbound, gets the ball there to Perry. Three minutes left in the game. Perry dribbles inside, gives it to Egan. And the ball's loose on the floor and still loose. And we're going to get a held ball call. And that will be Barnesville basketball. We've had a couple flurries here, Mark. Yes, we have. been kind of wild. 2.56 on the clock, 39-38 Barnesville. The winner of this will take on the winner of Bel Air and Harrison Central next or this coming Friday. Both teams also, Mark, just one team foul here in the quarter. So most likely this will not come down the free throws. Well, there's another foul right there as Rome will commit his third foul as he tried to reach across and pressure Detling. A lot of contact there, and that was a foul on Gavin Rome, his third. Again, Trail trying to increase their pressure. Okay, Detling guarded there by Rome. He's going to go all the way up, shoot it, and he will contact. be fouled. And this will be a shooting foul, and that's going to be on Rome, I believe. And that will be... Gavin Rome's fourth foul, and that will send Detling back to the line. Where Detling has shot seven free throws in the game. He is five of seven, he'll shoot two. And that went in and out. We've seen Barnes will be very streaky this year in our previous games, Mark, on their foul shooting. Yes. You know, some days they have struggled quite a bit at the line. 242 left in the game. And Detling has hardly set out this game. You've got to wonder about fatigue as the second one is good. And, and now it is a two-point Barnesville game lead. Giese replaces McQuain for the Warriors. Yeah, Barnesville has played the same five here the entire second half. And most of the first half. On top here is Cohen Egan. Warriors trailing by two. Up top of Donovan Geiger, now gets the ball to Egan on the right. Giese looks inside, nothing there. Kicks it back out to Rome. Baseline shot up, no good there by Geiger. Rebound off to Barnesville. Buckeye Trail has not, has not shot the ball well against this Barnesville zone. No. Trail has struggled. This will be Starr, gets it inside to Geilinger. And it'll be swatted away. It'll be Barnesville ball underneath. Travis Dodd checks in for Buckeye Trail along with Brady Hastings. I could hear the hand hitting the leather yes. inside there as the ball was knocked out of bounds. So star went bound. 201 left. Ball comes out to Casey Carpenter. This would be Geilinger. He'll drive in, put it up. No good. 
And we've got a held ball, I believe. And I think that should be it's, Barnesville. It should be Barnesville ball. No, no, it should be Buckeye Trail ball. Right, that's what I mean, yeah. And the officials are now coming to the table. It is, it is Buckeye Trail ball. Because we had that mad scramble just a little while ago on the floor yes. down to our, to our no, right. that's the right call. On yeah. that. So it, it was definitely, and they did not get switched on the side there. So but it was Trails basketball. So inside two minutes now, Trail trailing by a pair of points. Rome on top. 140. Marzell only one foul in this quarter. That could be a factor. This is Dodd up top here. This is Egan down low. He'll go up and strong inside. His shot no good. Ball knocked out of bounds. Wow. I think Buckeye Trail has had so many shots in the lane tonight that have not gone in. They'll get another chance here as Gavin Rome will inbound with 128 left. 40, 38 Barnesville. Three-point shot in the corner. No good. Rebounded by Barnesville, and that will be Starr. And as soon as he gets it to Detlin, I believe Detlin's going to get fouled. Or we could have a timeout. And it will be a full timeout. So with 123 left in this ball game, we'll take a quick break here. Barnesville 40, Buckeye Trail 38. Doan Ford is proud to introduce the ultimate adventure companion, the Bronco four-door advanced 4x4 Badlands. With a powerful 2.3-liter EcoBoost engine and seven-speed manual transmission, conquer any terrain with confidence, featuring a soft top, four-inch lift, and massive 35-inch tires. Adventure knows no bounds. Stay connected and in control with an 8-inch digital screen while enjoying added convenience with power-heated mirrors and auto high-beam headlamps, plus equipped with a Smitty-built winch. Be prepared for any challenge. Don't miss out on this incredible deal. Doanford.com. You're listening to High School Basketball on 93BNV, WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield. We're back here at Buckeye Trail, where we have a barn burn tonight. Barnesville still ahead, 40 to 38, with under two minutes to go in the game. Buckeye Trail, I believe, does have the ball. Both teams, not Barnesville has no, the ball. Barnesville, that's right, okay. Uh, both teams with two timeouts remaining. The Warriors have three team fouls, Barnesville just one. And the Shamrocks can use that to their advantage. And the ball will come in to Detling. And he'll just bring it up against Rome. He'll get over the line, goes around him. Doing a good job of handling the ball. This will be Geilinger down to Geilinger. And they'll get it over the Detling. One minute to go in the game. Detling, and he'll be fouled by Rome. And that will be Gavin Rome's fifth foul, and he is now out of the game. And pressuring up top on Detling, and he'll be replaced by Mason McQuain. That was just the that is the fourth team foul, so he's still out of bounds. Everybody's lined up at the free throw line. It's not. It's not well. Everybody's lined up here, and again, the officials, some confusion over here at the scorer's table. And uh, Barnesville was saying it was a shooting foul here. It was not a shooting no, foul. Uh -uh. It was clear out beyond midcourt. Uh, it's 14 fouls. Uh, they have established that, so it will be out of bounds underneath. And that is the correct call. Yes. It was definitely not a shooting foul. No, he just... And it was out Barely front. Barely tripped him up top there, but the thing is, Rome now is out of the game for yes. a trail of five. And the next foul will create a shooting situation for Barnesville. Okay, Casey Carpenter. He'll pull it in, shoot. Bad shot. Forces it up, and it is no good. Yeah, bad decision there yeah. by Casey. Inside, this is Perry. He'll get the ball to Hastings. His layup will not go in. The offensive rebound back out top by Trail. 38 seconds left. McQuain. This ball to Egan in the corner. His shot is no good. Offensive rebound, Perry goes back up and scores. Charlie Perry with his first points in the second half. We're tied, 25 seconds left. Barnesville will have the last shot and if they so choose. They're not going with a timeout. And this will be no good. And this is Carpenter misses it. Perry and timeout, Buckeye trail, 11 seconds left. Not sure why Casey forced that one up. And it will be a full timeout. 
let's stay here. In my opinion, a couple of bad decisions by Barnesville in going to the hoop in that situation. They did not need that shot that quickly. We get a uh, sub here, Jet Geesey checking in during this timeout. We're tied at 40. I believe there's 11 seconds left. This is just the second time tonight, Mark, that we've been tied. Yes, Barnesville has led at every other point in this game. Buckeye Trail has never led. And they have a chance now with 11 seconds to go in the game. They score. Most likely they're going on to play Harrison Central or Bel Air next, uh, this Friday. But there are 11 seconds left. Timeout clock running. Shamrock's back on. They'll stay in their zone, I'm sure, here. Coach Greg Strasser will draw something up. You know, trail hoping they can get a basket here and win it. Barnesville probably just, if nothing else, hoping they can force it into overtime. Trail has to come the length of the floor. Barnesville will extend their zone just a little bit. This will keep Trail from rolling the ball inbounds. This is Egan. Ten seconds. Giese back to Egan. This is Dodd. He'll force up a three. It's knocked away. Shot, no shot. It knocked away, and it will be no good. Duker Costello's half-court shot would not have counted anyway. We've got overtime. We've played 32 minutes, and we're tied at 40. We'll be back with the overtime after this. Looking to make your vehicle shine like new? Hendershot Detailing in Barnesville is your answer. With over 20 years of experience, their team knows cars, trucks, and SUVs inside and out. They offer a range of packages to fit your needs. Check them out on Facebook and give them a call or text at 579-1374 to schedule your appointment today. Hendershot Detailing, where every detail counts. You're watching High School Basketball on ABC Sports. For all things basketball and to view our upcoming game schedule, visit yourradioplace.com. Start of overtime, we will jump it up. That will be Charlie Perry and Asa Geilinger will jump it up. Cohen Egan, Dodd, Tyre Egan, along with uh, Perry and Geiger on the floor for the Warriors. And it will be controlled by the Warriors. Costello, Detling, Starr, Carpenter and Geilinger for the Shamrocks, as have been the whole second half. Barnesville is yet the sub in the second half. This is Egan. This is Dodd. He'll shoot a three on the side. No good. Inside rebound is good. That is Cohen Egan. His first bucket of overtime, and that is the first Warrior lead of the game. Four minutes is what an overtime is in high school basketball. And looks like the Warriors maybe will play a little zone. Now we saw them play some in the second quarter. This will be Dentley. Back off the star over to Casey Carpenter. Thinks about the three, pulls it back in to Duke Costello. Now we'll see if Barnesville can come up with an answer here and handle this pressure. This will be Geilinger. Three players good. Big shot there by Geilinger. That's his fourth three-pointer of the game. Kyer Egan down. Shamrocks lead by a point. 2.45 left in overtime. This is Geiger. Cohen Egan now on the left side. Back up top end of the Dodd. Kyer Egan. Again, Dodd on the left. Again, the Warriors unable to penetrate inside. This is Cohen Egan. His three-point shot misses badly. Rebound off to Detling. And he'll pull it back. Work for a good shot, and they're going to say make him foul. What the coaches from Barnesville saying. And we can hear a lot here from the Barnesville coaches. So we're sitting right beside here. Two minutes, just over two minutes left. And again, the fouls carry over. So Buckeye Trail has four team fouls. Shamrocks will shoot on the next Buckeye Trail foul. Okay, this will be Costello to Geilinger. And 
A little bit of hands, but not enough for a foul. Barnesville right now, they're just gonna make Trail foul him. Almost loses the ball, but Costello's able to come up with it. Barnesville running that weave right now. 90 seconds remaining. Warriors gonna have to make a move here with a foul or something. Just running the time off the clock. And, and there's the, the foul. foul. And that will send Gollinger to the line. That will be the fourth foul on Cohen Egan. And that will send Asa Gollinger to the line for the first time today. 119 left in overtime. Barnesville 43-42 lead. Okay, Gallagher's first free throw, no good. Big shot there. Barnesville's had a lot of opportunities at the foul line, but they've left several points at the line tonight. Gallagher's next free throw is good. Two point lead now for Barnesville. Buckeye Trail gets the ball back with 1.15 to go in this overtime. Kyer Egan. This is Geiger up on top. Tries to get the ball down inside to Perry. He'll lose possession of the ball inside, out of bounds. Again, Perry tried to make a move in there, but lost it out of bounds. It will be Barnesville ball. And, and I think we're going to have a Buckeye Trail timeout. So 107 left here in overtime, 44-42 Barnesville. Shamrock ball, length of the floor. Shamrocks are shooting the bonus. Just looking, we've mentioned the foul several times here. Buckeye Trail has not attempted a free throw in the second half. And Barnesville has attempted several. I have Barnesville for eight missed free throws in the game. Yeah, I have them for 11 of 19. So actually, I've got them for 10, so of course that doesn't mean but, anything. But 11 makes the Buckeye Trails three, so Barnesville has an eight point advantage at the foul line tonight. And you always like that when you go on the road, you know, to get that advantage at the foul line. So but we'll see what Trail decides to do here. 44-42 Barnesville. Will they foul right away? Will they try for a turnover, then foul after a few seconds? I would not foul until after the getting across midcourt. I would you know, pressure a little bit. There's 107 left. I think you gotta try to, to force Barnesville to handle the ball. All right, they got everybody up, Trail does. Now they get in the Dentling, the rest of them will fall back. Casey Carpenter, here is his outlet. Gets a two star. Double teamed up there, and they are going to call a foul. Nope. Timeout. Timeout. They're on the trap here. Detling. This will be Barnesville calling this one. And they this will, will go full. to the full timeout then. I think Luke Detling called the timeout there. He saw the trap coming on the side, and knowing they had timeouts remaining. And the Shamrocks do have two remaining. Uh, Buckeye Trail has one remaining. Again, so, the winner of this will take on either Bel Air or Harrison Central. Most likely Harrison Central at CAD is on Friday. And uh, we haven't been able to get a score on that game yet. But too much going on here, Mark, to check yes. the scores. Okay, Harrison Central, a big winner tonight, 74 to 30 over Bel Air. So whoever wins this game will travel to Caddis on Friday night to take on the Harrison Central. Barnesville has played Harrison twice this year and lost to them both times. Harrison, a very good and a very tall team. But first things first here, Barnesville's got to take care of the ball. Get it inbounds, and they do. This will be over to. And a backcourt violation called there. I was not. I was not looking there. I, I did not see there, but I think I think Detling jumped from the back court yeah. and caught the ball before he had established himself in the front court. And just what I saw of it, I think it probably was definitely the correct call. So this is Cohen Egan now. 45 seconds left. Trail try, trailing by two. Get the ball inside for Perry. Force up inside. The shot's no good, but there will be a foul on the Shamrocks. And it will be on Detling, his first, and it is a shooting foul. So 
Travis Dodd will go to the line. Dodd was 0 for 2 in the first quarter at the line. And it will be the Warriors' first free throws of the half. First one is good. 44-43, Shamrocks. 42 seconds on the clock. Again, Barnes, or excuse me, Buckeye Trail with some subs back in the game. Dodd, second free throw. Good. We're tied again. So Barnes out with the ball. They will have a chance at the last shot here. Took a couple of ill-advised shots right before the end of the game last time. Hopefully not now. As Barnesville row won that weave. And this will be Duke and Costello, and he puts it in. That's why those shots say, no, don't. But then he gets it. You say, good shot. 22 seconds left. Egan. Warriors trailing by two. Timeout. Buckeye trail. 18 seconds on the clock. That will be the final Buckeye trail timeout. Full timeout. 46 44, Barnesville on a drive in the lane there. A little runner by Duker Costello. A 6-4 scoring edge here in overtime by the Shamrocks. Well, I think everybody's getting their money's worth tonight, Mark. Yes, definitely are. As we mentioned earlier, the winner of this game will go to Harrison Central on Friday night. Harrison Central, a big winner tonight over Belair by a score of 74-30. Shenandoah then tonight loses at Monroe Central. Final score 38 to 29. I would guess that Shenandoah played the slowdown game you know, quite a bit there. That's a very low scoring game. But Monroe Central will advance. They will play the winner of Connaughton Valley Bridgeport on Friday night. A lot of work to be done here tonight now as 46-44. Barnesville leading with 18 seconds on the clock. The Warriors have the ball inbounds in front of their own bench. Cohen Egan now has the ball across midcourt. Egan on top. This is Dodd back out to Giese. He'll shoot a three from the wing. No good. Re offensive rebound laid in there by Donovan Geiger. We're tied again. Buzzer, no good by Geiger. We're going overtime one more time. Wow. Buckeye Trail has really taken advantage of the offensive rebounds tonight with their height. And there was another example right there. Let's go ahead and step aside real quick then, and we'll have a second overtime coming up. We're tied at 46. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it's for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company from Iowa to offer liability coverage to package with their Patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today, 740-305-5121 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Hi, this is Melissa Smithberger. And I'm Crystal Vogler with Smithberger Realty. Are you looking to sell or buy real estate? Smithberger Realty is a part of our nation's largest traditional and auction real estate company. We also represent the largest network for recreational land through Realtree hunting properties. We can provide you with national marketing with local expertise. Come visit our offices in Clarington or Barnesville. Smithberger Realty, ready to work for you. Smithberger Realty is an affiliate of United Country Real Estate. Overtime number two. Perry and Geilinger controlled by the Warriors. This is Cohen Egan. I just wonder about the fatigue factor of none of these Barnesville players have sat out this entire second half or either overtime. Other than the breaks during the timeouts. Yes. Barnesville stayed in that zone as they've been all night. Again, trail very patient up top here. This is Cohen Egan on left side driving into the lane. Dodd, this is Geiger in the corner back on top now to Dodd. His two free throws tied at the, at the end of the first overtime. Ball's knocked away there but retrieved there by Geiger. Again, we've played 40 seconds here of the second overtime. Tied at 46. Again, Buckeye Trail willing to be patient here and hold the ball. And Barnesville will stay back in that zone. If I'm Barnesville, I'll stay back in that yeah. zone. Yep. Yeah. Especially with uh, them probably being tired. 
And then left side, this is Dodd. Now works on the right. He's back on top to Geiger. This is Egan in the corner. Again, the Warriors have not been able to get the ball inside to Perry and Hastings. They're the two post guys right now and not been able to penetrate that Barnesville zone at all. This is Cohen Egan. Now gets it inside to Perry. He goes up strong inside and misses. Casey Carpenter with the rebound. Foul in the backcourt on Hastings. And that is a bonus situation. And Barnesville will go to the line to shoot now at 2.40 left in the second overtime. This will be Casey Carpenter. Barnesville's lone junior on the floor. And again, the officials come over to the side there, you know, making sure the arrow was correct there. We had a question about the arrow earlier. And Casey and Carpenter. First free throw, good. Off the front of the rim and in. That's now seven points for Casey Carpenter in the game. And Barnesville back on top by a point. That one no good. Rebound off on a long rebound picked up there by Donovan Geiger. This is Egan passing inside, bullet pass, and it goes out of bounds. That's about a 90 mile an hour yes. fastball wow. there. That is now 14 turnovers on Buckeye Trail. Mason McQuain checks back in for the Warriors in place of Donovan Geiger. Coach Strasser doing a lot of offense, defense subbing here. The ball will come in to Geilinger. He'll get it over to Casey Carpenter and then trail will fall back. And Barnesville is in the bonus. There, Barnesville will go back into this weave. 2.19 to go in the second overtime. Casey Carpenter. He'll hand it off to Starr. Barnesville running that weave, keeping the ball away. Inside two minutes now in the second overtime. Shamrock's one point up. Detling. And he will be double teamed. He'll go in, get it over to Duke Costello and out to Casey Carpenter. And they will start over again. 140 left in the second overtime. Barnesville leading by one here in the second overtime. And finally, a foul there. And that is on Cohen Egan, and, and that is his fifth. He has fouled out of the game, becomes the second Warrior to foul out. So Detling will now go to the line. He'll shoot two, a chance to make it a three-point game. Detling is six of nine at the line in the game. 47-46 Barnes with 132 left. This will be free throw attempt number 21 and 22 for Barnesville. And this one is too hard, no good. Barnesville free throw shooting, leaving Buckeye Trail in this game. And that one is no good. Rebounded by Casey Carpenter. How did he get in there and get that one? Wow. But then he almost throws the ball away. But, but Starr is able to pick up that loose ball. And it looks like Taysen Starr got fouled. Taysen in the right place at the right time, or Trail would have had a breakaway easy layup. That is the foul on Dodd. That is his fourth. And Taysen Starr to the line. Taysen has not scored in the game. His first free throw, no good. Barnesville struggling when they need him the most from the free throw line. Five misses in the two overtimes, I believe, here by the Shamrocks from the free throw line. If they end up losing this game, that's one place they'll have to look. That one good. So it's a two-point Barnesville lead with a minute 26 to go. Again, this is Kyer Egan now. He'll run the point. Giese in the corner. Again, 115, second overtime. Giese in the corner. Back to Egan, Kyer Egan. Giese forces up a three out of the corner, no good. Loose ball rebound comes off there to Costello. Less than a minute, second overtime. Shamrock's leading by two points. And a foul up top there on Kyer Egan, his third. 
And Detling back to the line. Detling missed a pair here in the overtimes. That went nothing but net. It's now a three-point lead for Barnsell. 16 points by Luke Detling. Uh, really strong ball game running the point and, and handling things there for the Shamrocks. This could create a two-possession lead, but nope, no good. Short, rebounded by Buckeye, or by Buckeye Perry, Trail. This is Egan all the way down, and then layup no good by Kyer Egan, rebound off to Barnesville. Here's Costello out ahead of the pack, goes up and misses the layup. It was blocked. Ball goes out of bounds, and Shamrock Bench wants a goal 10 call. And the ball went out of bounds, and it will be Buckeye Trail basketball, I believe, yes. And we're going to get a timeout here. Barnesville called a timeout, and it's a full timeout with 36 seconds left here in the second overtime. Barnesville leading 49-46. Well, two officials came over and told the Barnesville bench here, no, it was not goaltending. I'm not sure that anybody over of course on their bench. they're going to say that. They didn't call it. <laughs> <laughs> on that. And, and from here, you know, I can't say was or wasn't. Right. You know, it was a fine effort there, by, I believe, by Hastings to, to, to make the play. But it's 49-46 Barnesville you know, in the second overtime. And I still, again, I don't have anything. I, I don't think Buckeye Trail has led yet. They've no. been tied a couple, two or three times, but Buckeye Trail has never led in the game. Barnesville jumped off to about, a, I think it was 10-0 right to start. Three-point lead here. And the Warriors have lost two players to fouls. Gavin Rome and Cohen Egan have both fouled out. And they have two players on the floor, and Brady oh. Hastings and Travis Dodd, each with four. Okay, uh, I misunderstood. It's Barnesville ball. It is ball. Barnesville ball, man. Okay. My mistake. The Barnesville's key first foul, just get it in bounds. And it will come in to Geilinger. And he'll go up top, and they're going to have to foul him. And, and there it is. A foul on Kyer Egan. That is his fourth. We talked about Trail having some depth, you know, with nine players. Yeah. If we go to a third overtime, <laughs> we may see who their 10th player is. And this is the situation now. One free throw here. It, we won't say seal it, but it's going to make it awful difficult for Trail. They would have to score twice in 32 seconds. And that one's good. Big basket there by Asa Geilinger. Geilinger's now two of three at the free throw line tonight. He has 14 points in the game. And what you can't do here is Trail comes down and forces up a shot. You don't want to foul a shooter. Got that one's good. Five-point lead now for Barnesville, 32 seconds. Kyer Egan's going to drive all the way to the hoop, and he will be fouled. Somebody's tried to strip him of the ball in there, and will be on Tace and Star. That's one you almost just let him go and let him shoot the layup. And they're going to say it was on the floor. Oh, my. Oh, my. They say... That is on the floor, and the trail will now have to take the ball out. I thought that was probably in the act of shooting. This the fishing, Buckeye Trail, is, uh, I agree with you. The fishing crew's had some, some tough things here tonight, that's for sure. Inside pass, now this is Egan, goes up strong inside, he gets off the backboard, he'll be fouled there, and I think this one is shooting. Yes, he held up two fingers. And the foul is on, they caught on Geilinger, his third. And that will send Kyer Egan to the line for the first time tonight. He has five points. And he misses the first free throw. 24 seconds on the clock. We are in the second overtime, 51-46 Barnesville. Second free throw, rattles out, no good, rebound to Starr. And he'll be fouled right away. Boy, two costly... Misses there by Trail from the line. So both teams really hurting themselves at the free throw line tonight. Foul on Geiger, his second, and it is, you know, bonus long time ago for the Shamrocks. Taysen Starr, who is one of two at the line. Give Trail credit. They fouled right as they needed to there, and only one second off the clock. And Starr's free throw is good. That now makes it a six point Barnesville lead. 
So if he gets this one, it'll be a three possession game. And this one up and good. Barnesville in good shape right now. And it goes out of bounds. A pass from Egan and for Giese in the corner, goes off his hands, out of bounds. And I think Shamrock fans can, can start planning on that trip up. Back up to Caddis. Caddis on Friday night. And the Shamrocks and Huskies have played twice during the season. Inbounds in the back there. Geilinger fouled by Perry. And with all the fouls that have been called tonight, that is Charlie Perry's first foul. Wow, that's hard to believe. And he's played a lot tonight. And Geilinger, who is three for four at the line. Shamrock's up seven with 16 seconds left, and Coach Shane Stevens is enjoying this one. Geilinger's first free throw good. This will be free throw number 30 of the game for the with Shamrocks. 30 free throws on the road. And that one is good. And 15 seconds left. Dodd comes down. They allow him to drive to the hoop, and Buckeye Trail still can't get a ball to go in the basket. And Starr has the ball, and... Costello has it, and that's the ball game. It's double overtime, and the Barnesville Shamrocks, as Buckeye Trail does not score in the second overtime, 9-0 edge by the Shamrocks and a 55-46 victory, and the Shamrocks will now head to Harrison Central on Friday night for their second game of the sectional tournament. So we'll go ahead and step aside, figure up some stats, get a couple messages in. Once again, in double overtime, Barnesville 55 and Buckeye Trail 46. In your time of need, will you be happy with your cut rate car insurance? Will you have the coverages you need? Valentine Insurance is dedicated to protecting you and your family when you need it. As an independent insurance agency, we have partnered with many reputable insurance companies who even have local claims adjusters to provide you with unbeatable service. Are you going to trust a talking lizard to help you with your claim? Really? Don't let this happen to you. Trust the professionals at Valentine Insurance. Call 994-1776. Discover it all at Village Hardware and Rental. Find quality Milwaukee tools, general hardware, electrical supplies, Valspar paint with color matching, and more. Need equipment? They've got rentals from bulldozers to bowl floats. With an indoor lumberyard, pipes, culverts, and sacrete, they've got your construction needs covered. Visit 265 South Chestnut Street, Barnesville, and support local businesses. Village Hardware and Rental wishes both teams the best of luck tonight. Your home and your car are likely your two biggest investments. Protecting them from unexpected damage is a prime concern to WB Green Insurance. They are proud to represent Westfield Insurance, a financial service organization that provides insurance products for your home, auto, and business. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield Insurance's pledge to their customers, along with personalized claim service that's fast and friendly. To learn how Westfield can help with your insurance needs, talk to WB Green Insurance today. I was sitting in my car, and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood, and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. Then on the radio, I heard of West 40 by Pay here, where for a little money down and a little each week, I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door, and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of a guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there. Here's a home comfort tip from Rumor Loudon Incorporated. When faced with a heating or air conditioning repair, it can be confusing on which company to call. Consider this. Rumor Loudon guarantees any parts in the labor to change it for a year. You might think it's new. How likely is it to go bad? Well, many things aren't made like they used to be, and unfortunately it does happen. 
Sometimes we don't have a choice on parts because we need to comply with your brand specifications. Regardless, we want our customers to know that we will stand behind those parts and the labor to change it should it fail within a year of the repair. Now, our regular trip charge applies, and we do not include oil nozzles and filters, but that still leaves a lot of items over many types and brands that are covered. Also, remember to maintain your equipment. Just like a car, it needs to be checked over for wear and tear. Even just a loose wire can leave you stranded. Plus, air filters need to be checked and then changed or cleaned as needed. Call Rumor Loudon in Barnesville, St. Clairsville to schedule a tune-up, and check out rumorloudon.com for lots of home comfort information. Okay, we're back here at Buckeye Trail High School, and what a dandy tonight as the people get their money's worth, and the Barnesville Shamrocks are heading home happy tonight as the Shamrocks post a 55-46 double overtime win against the Buckeye Trail Warriors. And it was a dandy of a game tonight. When Barnesville, as Mark will give you some stats here in a moment, took good use of the foul line, and, and Buckeye Trail really not shooting the ball extremely well against the Barnesville zone and the Shamrocks come out on top in double overtime. So, team stats, Mark. Okay, first of all, I got a minute here. I want to say hello to Sadie Anderson. Sadie Anderson, listening to us. First grader at Barnesville. Glad you're listening to us tonight, Sadie. Have a good evening. All right, uh, Barnesville the, and Harrison Central. As we said, Barnesville comes out with a nine-point win in two overtimes. A lot of that uh, lead come as Barnesville was forced to, or had to shoot free throws because trail was forced to uh, foul them late in the game. Uh, both teams tonight not shooting from the field very well. Only 34% each. Barnesville was 14 of 41 and Buckeye Trail 19 of 56. What won it for Barnesville was one, they had seven three-pointers. Buckeye Trail only had three. And the other thing, Barnesville was 20 of 30 from the free throw line and Buckeye Trail was only five of 12. So that comes out tonight with a 55 to 46 win for the Shamrocks, and they will be at Harrison Central on Friday evening. And that will be here on WBNV and most likely on YouTube TV also, I believe. Yeah, stay, but uh, we'll post that yeah, and stay let you tuned, know. Stay tuned during the week to let you know what's up on that. Okay, rebounds tonight, Barnesville 26 and Buckeye Trail 34. What hurt, helped Trail a lot tonight, they had 12 Offensive reboards bounce tonight, and several of those they really will put back in. In fact, an offensive rebound right at the end of the first quarter, or first timeout, gave them the second overtime. Turnovers tonight, Barnesville with 17, and Buckeye Trail with 15. And again, we said the free throw shooting, Barnesville 20 of 30, Buckeye Trail was five of 12. Jeff, individual scoring. And as you mentioned, the free throw shooting there, you know, tonight also, you know, Barnes were just 12 team fouls. Buckeye Trail had 26 team fouls. Of course, they were fouling a lot, you know, late, you know, in, you know, because of the score situation. Trail also lost two players, you know, in the game due to fouling out. But uh, Gavin Rome, he was one of those Warriors that fouled out. He had two points for the game. Uh, Cohen Egan also fouled out. He had nine. Uh, Charlie Perry with 11. Uh, Jet Giese had one field goal for two. Uh, Kyer Egan had five points. Mason McQueen did not score. Brady Hastings with four. Travis Dodd was six. And Donovan Geiger was seven for a total of 46. So once again for the Warriors, Charlie Perry with 11. Cohen Egan with nine. Donovan Geiger with seven. Travis Dodd with six. Kyer Egan with five, four for Brady Hastings, two for Jet Giese, and two for Gavin Rome for a total of 46. Barnesville led 15-6 at the end of the first quarter, 24-21 Shamrocks at halftime, 35-32 Barnesville at the end of three. At the end of regulation, we were tied at 40. At the end of the first overtime, we were tied at 46, and Barnesville with a 9-0 edge in the second overtime to win this game 55-46. Just six players, well, seven players really played for Barnesville, but only five played in the second half. Casey Carpenter was seven points on the game. He was three of four at the foul line. Taysen Starr, three of four at the line for his three points tonight. Those were all in the overtimes. Luke Detling played just a super game tonight. He goes for 16 points.
Costello with nine. Uh, Willis, Braden Willis had a three-point goal in the first half for three, and Asa Gollinger was 17. Asa in the overtimes hits five of six at the foul line. So once again, for the Shamrocks, 17 for Gollinger, 16 for Detling, nine for Costello, seven for Carpenter, three for Starr, and three for Willis. It all adds up to a 55-46 double overtime win for the Barnesville Shamrocks, and they will head to Harrison Central and then play the Harrison Central Huskies. I believe the Huskies are the number two seed in the, the sectional on Friday night. Okay, so again, uh, that will be here on WVMB and possibly on TV, on YouTube TV. Uh, listen to WBMV this week or check out the Barnesville Basketball Facebook page, and we'll keep you updated on that. Again, that will be up at Cadiz at Harrison Central. Again, your final score tonight is Barnesville 55, Buckeye Trail 46 in two overtimes. Good night, everyone. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.